We are live. Hello, people. Welcome to the show. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And this is the Mitch and Philip channel coming to you from San Francisco, California, where today in San Francisco, it is a very cool and pleasant 64 degrees right now with partly cloudy skies. Yeah, it's a little gray out there. It is significantly different than last oh, week yeah. when this <laughs> kitchen was 95 degrees during a heat wave with no air conditioning. And we still powered through it. And we were making using waffle iron. That was actually better than having the oven on. Actually, yeah. the June oven doesn't really heat up the kitchen very much, but the big conventional oven makes this kitchen get really hot really fast. So fortunately, the temperatures have come down. For those of you who are curious about where our new house is being built in Brentwood, it is 79 degrees this afternoon, and it is sunny yeah. over in Brentwood. So those are good conditions for the work crews because – Probably this week they'll be putting the stucco, which is a cement type of siding that goes on the exterior of the entire building. That's going to be happening this week. So we're looking forward to the picture that our broker sends us. Every weekend our broker sends us a picture so we can see the progress of the building since we can't get over there it's very as exciting. often as we'd like. It is. It's super fun. It's really cool. So I want to say hello to everyone in the chat. For those of you who are new, when you see me looking over this way, this is where our computer setup is to run this show. So I want to say hello to Susan from Rhubarb and Cod, who just returned from a trip to Mexico, and she's back home Ooh. in Canada. So she is an international lady. And her most recent video, she was using this lovely cheese and blistered grapes to make this really amazing appetizer on crostini bread, okay. which looked supremely lovely. If you've ever watched Rhubarb and Cod channel before, and I'm sure you probably have, you know how visually appealing all of their videos are. The camera angles, the lighting, the food always looks exquisite. It's really, really slick and professional, and everything looks absolutely delicious. So, you know, hats off to you because that's an awesome channel. Rhubarb and Cod, great to see you here. And I see Peter Lee is here from Let's Celebrate TV. Welcome, Peter. We just watched Peter's episode about the crazy cake. Ooh, that looked so good. And he put that autumn spin on it with warming spices. So it's a little different than the classic recipe, which is usually chocolate. But Peter, that cake looked supremely delicious. And Jim from Suburban Barbecue is in the house. Hi, Jim. Great to see you. Nate, Mr. Blue, King Blue is here in the house. Great to see you too. And let's see, I'm sure I missed them. There I go. Oh, Second Chance Love. Daniel's in the house. Hi, Daniel. We just went thrifting today, but we saw absolutely no Ray Dunn anywhere yeah. we went and no Joanna Parker either. So we'll probably find more of that when we get to Brentwood because they have a home goods store there that carries a lot of Joanna Parker and uh, Ray Dunn products. So we'll probably be able to find more things once we get there, hopefully. So, okay, let me make sure I said hello to everyone else. I was Anadi, Chef Anadi yeah. from Cooking with Anadi. Hi Anadi, great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here. So on the menu today, are low carb, triple meat, pizza bites, pizza cups. pizza cups, pizza cups. There we have it. Now we've had people comment in the past about why do you guys make low carb recipes? You don't need some sort of fad thing. And it was like, well, I don't think low carb is a fad. Personally, I think it's a food plan choice. And all I can say from our experience, I weigh 40 pounds less now than I did three years ago because I stopped eating carbs. And what that looked like was no bread, no biscuits, no waffles, no potatoes, no pasta, oh, you know, yeah. all the all things right. we all love, no rice. You're right. So we make cauliflower rice now. So we're always on the lookout for appetizers because we love eating appetizers that don't involve a lot of high carbs. So they're all vegetables. Right, and, and have some <laughs> things other than vegetables. Because, you know, we like meat, too. So what we've got going on today is it, these little pizza bites, they taste just like pizza, but without the dough. So the carbs, you know, are really, really low because we don't have a bunch of dough going on. In here. But the key to making these are we're going to first do part one of making the appetizers, and that involves the... Salami! The salami that Philip is showing you now. And this has to be cut in a very particular way in order to create little cups that are going to be the vessels for the filling that creates this lovely mm -hmm. low-carb triple meat pizza cup appetizer. Hello. So we're going to be making 12 today. Yep. 
because we have these little baking pans. These are like mini muffin size pans. So this is what you want to use. Sometimes these come in uh, four by six, so you can do 24 at once. We're using the June oven and these 12 cup muffin tins fit in that oven perfectly. So this is what we're going to be using today. And this doesn't need to be greased or anything because we're going to get plenty of grease There's out of the salami. It's sort of nonstick anyway. But, um, yeah, it's sort of. It's kind of old. But... <laughs> yeah, these have been around for I mean, a while. Ooh, I'm going to get new pans that are fresh nonstick. But anyway, yeah, this okay, is so, so greasy. We don't need nonstick. You've got some salami in a stack and tell us what happens next. Now i got to cut four sl slits basically in the salami. Okay. About a half an inch into the disc of salami. So basically you're making cuts at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, yeah. and 9 o'clock. Okay. Four cuts at right angles. Okay, so they're two across from each other and then two perpendicular to yeah. that. So like I said, 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. And you're cutting in. These slices of salami are about two and a half inches mm. in diameter. Let's measure them. We want to be sure and give you the right direction. So we're going to measure these salami pieces. If you have smaller salami, you'll have to do this a little bit differently. Uh, yeah, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Okay, and you're cutting approximately half an inch, half an inch into the slices for all the four different cuts. Okay, and so you did that with a stack of a few at a time and show us what yeah, happens six. next. So, we're doing that. so then you um, you basically wanna make like a little uh, cup. And you, I'm doing is pizza I'm, cups. So I'm taking the slits and folding a little bit over and then doing it again in the same fashion. And it's easier when you're down here. <laughs> yeah, well do it, just tuck it right on in the pan. And then voila, so you get, Perfect. Okay, so you see, that's the reason for putting the slits. So you, instead of having a fold, you get the yeah, pieces here. actually laying over the top of each other. You just try to shove it in. It's going to pop right back out. You get like that. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really work. So that's why these cuts are critical to getting this to work correctly. So, Okay, I want to say hi really quick to Karen from In the Kitchen with Karen. Hey, neighbor. Great to see you. How are you doing out there in Brentwood today? It's so much cooler than it was last week. And Bobby Joe, Ski Girly is in the house all the way from the East Coast. Great to see you tonight. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. Philip is showing us how to make these lovely triple meat pizza cups. And we've been carrying on about how they're low carb. And the reason for that is because unlike regular pizza or pizza appetizers, this doesn't have any dough in the recipe. So that way the carbs are immediately eliminated without really even having to try. And we're going to get all the benefit of all these great pizza flavors in a little tiny bite-sized appetizer. And like uh, Susan from Rhubarb and Cod mentioned earlier, these are things that get gobbled up quickly. When we made the test batches over the weekend, everyone in our house was just scarfing them down. They, were, they did not stay around for any length of time at all. So we're very much looking forward to showing you how to do this because as you can see, Philip is making easy work mm -hmm. of this. Is that Okay, so now you're going to get a few more slices because we can do 12 at a time with this baking pan. And Philip's going to once again make cuts at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock into the slices of salami, about half an inch in to a two and a half inch in diameter slice of salami. If you have smaller pieces of salami, you'll have to finagle this a little bit differently. And if you have larger ones, the same is also true. Uh, Jim from Suburban Barbecue says it's 91 in Houston today. Ooh. That is... That's that's decent. Last yeah. week it was 95 here in San Francisco, which is really hot for the city, especially because usually it's only about 65. And very few p people in residential areas have any kind of air conditioning because most of our houses were built before air conditioning was a common thing to have. Well, and usually it doesn't get that And it doesn't <laughs> usually need air conditioning. The fog is usually our air conditioning. So... Anyway, but today it's much cooler here in the kitchen, so it's agreeable to have the oven on. Just so you know, we're using the June countertop oven to bake these appetizers today. And we have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. Now, if you don't have a June countertop oven, then you should go to june.com and look it up. Or on Amazon, you can find June ovens. And you can have one on your countertop just like we do. It works really good. And... If you don't have a June oven, though, no worries, because you can use a conventional oven to bake these or even a toaster oven that as long as your oven's uh, heat source can heat up to at least 400 degrees, you'll be fine. Peter Lee says it's finally hot in Philadelphia and South Jersey. It's 80. Oh. 
And Susan says where they are, it's only 70. Yes, Karen is confirming what I saw earlier online, which, which is that it's 79 today in Brentwood. Okay. So that's all. That's significantly cooler oh, yeah. than last week. 103. By like 35 degrees. Okay, so we're on the last one here. So as you saw, just cutting and then folding these in so the, the pieces that are cut fold over each other like this. And then you get these lovely little cups. And just use your finger to uh, push down the bottom so it's flat on the bottom. We get a nice Right, you want these to be situated all the way down into the muffin pan. And just FYI, this is a mini muffin pan that we're using here. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's ready to go. The oven is up to temperature. It's up to 400 degrees. So these are going to go in and bake. And when we baked these over the weekend, we baked the cups by themselves for seven minutes. So we're going to set the timer on the oven to seven minutes. And then we'll show you what that looks like as soon as seven minutes has passed and they're ready to be taken out. In the meantime, Philip is going to show us how to make the filling for the little salami cups that he just created that are baking in the oven right now. Which is pretty easy. It's pretty easy. And we're using, you know, other pizza ingredients. We're using pepperoni. We're using some crispy bacon, some onions, some jalapeno, and some mozzarella cheese. Now, really quickly, Right below where you're watching this live stream, I've listed all the ingredients for the triple meat pizza cups, as well as this mocktail that we're drinking that we haven't mentioned. This is called the Cinderella mocktail. This recipe came to us from Natalie at the Mindful Mocktail channel, and we'll tell you how to make this drink before this live stream ends. Meanwhile, really quickly, Philip's getting ready to prepare some of the ingredients mm. for the filling of the triple meat pizza cups. And I'm just going to read off the ingredients to you really fast for those of you who want to hear it out loud. Okay, as you already saw, we used 12 slices of deli salami to create the pizza cups themselves. We're going to need eight slices of pepperoni, two slices of very crispy bacon, one quarter cup of finely chopped onion. That's what Philip's working on right now. Now, you're using a white onion? Yellow. This is a yellow onion. You could use whatever kind of onion that you like. Uh, we're also going to be using two tablespoons of finely chopped jalapeno pepper that have the membranes and seeds removed. Now, if you or someone you're cooking for is not a fan of jalapeno pepper, you can substitute any color belt bell pepper that you like instead. And if you don't like peppers at all, then you can just leave it out. Now, our final ingredient, uh, well, actually our second to last ingredient is a quarter cup of grated mozzarella cheese. Now we're using pre-grated cheese out of a bag, though we've confirmed that this cheese does not have any flour or other wheat products to act as the agent to keep it from sticking together. So we don't have to worry about that. But even though this cheese is already grated, it's still got a little bit of long stringy pieces. So Philip's going to chop that up as well. And then finally, our last ingredient is going to be a quarter cup of tomato based pizza sauce. You can use red sauce. You can use marinara sauce. Whatever you've got handy in the pantry or in the refrigerator will work just fine. And of course, these salami cups can accommodate a lot of different ingredients. This is what we're doing today, but we can have a chat about what else we could substitute instead of these particular ingredients that would make these hors d'oeuvres really flexible so you can create whatever kind of oh, flavor yeah. profile that you like. Use whatever sauce you want, whatever fillings you want. Okay, so now you're finely dicing the onion yep. and you've placed a quarter cup in the mixing yep. bowl. This is going to be the filling for our salami cups that are baking in the oven right now. And while you have the oven out, you're just pre-chopping it so we can make more batches of this later today. Yeah, I just chop a whole onion. But yes, well, that's a good way to go while you're all set up to do it. So let me check in with the chat really quickly. Uh, let's see. Okay, I see everyone's playing nicely. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all of you being here today. So we've got the onion ready to go, and what's going to happen next? Jalapeno! Okay, jalapeno. So we're going to have to be careful with that, because as you know, when you're using jalapeno, you always want to make sure that you wash your hands after you handle it because you don't want to be touching your face after you've had your hands all over a hot jalapeno high, pepper. Yeah. yeah, or anywhere else. So, and this, as I mentioned earlier, this mocktail we're drinking out of a tiki glass today just because we haven't used these tiki glasses for a while. This isn't really a tiki mocktail, but uh, it's actually very citrusy. 
there's orange juice, lemon juice, as well as pineapple juice in here. And this is actually some really rum yummy. And a tiki cocktail. You could make it tiki with some <laughs> coconut rum. That would be really good. Mm. Mm. Very refreshing. Oh my gosh, okay. that is refreshing. Now we will tell you how to make this before this show ends. But just so you know, the ingredients for both the triple meat pizza cups and the Cinderella mocktail that we got from the Mindful Mocktail channel. Both of those in list of ingredients are right down below where you're watching this live stream in the description area. Okay, so now you're just carefully, you've removed the stem and you're cutting out the membrane from the jalapeno. Uh, and you're also gonna make sure you've got all of the seeds out of there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we always try to be careful that errant seeds don't wind up on the floor because we have kitty cats in our house. And so we want to make sure that they don't get a hold of oh, yeah. a hot jalapeno seed. So if the same goes true, if you have doggies or other little pets running around that live on the floor, we will tell you Susan about these in the not too distant future. These are super easy to make and you probably have all of the ingredients already in your cabinet. Okay, these, let me check on these really quick. Now we've only got one minute 44 to go and the salami cups are starting to develop sort of a sheen because they're gonna start to release some of their oils. You may be wondering why do you have to bake the salami pieces separately before putting the filling in? And the reason for that is that the salami is going to release a lot of oil and it gets very greasy. So once the salami cups are partially baked or par-baked, Philip is going to take them out of the oven and carefully remove them from the muffin pan and let them sit on some paper towels on a rack for a few minutes so the paper towels can soak up all the excess grease. We found this makes a much better result and it takes a little bit longer to do a two-step baking progress process, excuse me, but it really does yield a much better end result. And then the appetizers are not greasy when you go to pick them up because we are definitely serving this as finger food. Okay, so you've got the jalapeno going on, and we're going to need uh, about two tablespoons of finely chopped jalapeno. And like I mentioned before, if you're not a fan of jalapeno, you can use any kind of pepper that you like, including no pepper at all. How'd you do? Good. Okay. An eighth of a cup is two tablespoons. Hello. Okay, so we're going to go with an eighth of a cup. Could be two tablespoons at your house if that's what you have handy. Voila. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna stash the rest of that. Do you want me to get you a container? I got it already. Oh, you got one already. Okay. I'm all planned it's ahead. Preparation, people. That's what I got my up. mise en place. Yes, mise en place. Okay. Which means everything in its place. Oops, here we okay. go. You want me to pop those out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so I should push finish. And we'll start the oven over when yeah. it's time to do yeah. the middle. It won't be hard. We won't, it won't take hard to sizzly. I'm going to be coming out with the hot pan. Put a marker on the rack. Hot pan, hot pan, hot pan. Okay, coming in hot. Now, I want to come over here and show everyone what these look like when they come out. They shrink up a little, too. Yeah, you can see that the salami pieces have shrunk up a little bit, and they've released a lot of their oils. So next, we're going to just set this over here very carefully on the rack. We'll let it cool in the pan for a little bit, and then we'll take them out and put them on some paper towels. Now we'll swap pans because uh, the of these are full of grease. Yeah, that's going to be full of grease. So we have two pans, so that'll save the step of having to wash the pan out in between. Wipe it out. Yeah, you could wipe it out. Uh, if you only have one pan, then that's the way you're going to have to do this. But it's uh, we're just going to use a fresh pan just because we have one available, and it'll expedite Shopping this pepperoni. presentation. Okay, so you just have regular pep size yeah. pepperonis. They're about the size of a silver dollar. Daniel is saying he really enjoys watching us cook. And he's very excited to see our holiday baking series. Oh, we yeah. have got That's some fun. good stuff. Starting next Tuesday, we're starting our Halloween baking series of episodes. So I know, Daniel, you'll be excited about that because Daniel is a Halloween aficionado. And your latest decorating video where you did the mug wall, Daniel, that was spectacular. 
everything looked really, really good. So as you can see, Philip just chopped up the pepperoni slices in tiny little bits and added that to the onion and jalapeno in our mixing stack. bowl. So you're going to use actually a few more. That was how many slices to begin with? Because I wrote eight slices on the recipe, but I think we're going a little pepperoni heavy today. Which one? Well, like I said, Try. you can use it. Uh, whatever ingredients that you like to create your filling, it does need to include some cheese to sort of hold everything all together. So we're actually modifying the recipe we've published on the fly here because I wrote eight slices of pepperoni and we're really using about twice that much. Because I just, you know, I don't use recipes a lot. I just pour it in wherever I feel like. I know, but I have to be able to write things <laughs> down so people can <laughs> replicate what we do. How much have you used? How much have you used? Well, I don't know. I do it a little well, bit. Well, we have to measure. Okay. Peter Lee says Halloween is the Holy Grail at their house, yeah. and they do epic themed Halloween Ooh, parties. Ooh, that sounds like fun. We did an online Halloween party last year where pretty much we just showed hors d'oeuvres, and we drank a lot of alcohol because actually, was it last year or the year no, before? It must before, have been the year before yeah. because I've been sober for almost two years, so uh, we definitely, we, we got completely obliterated during our Halloween live stream when we were drinking. I think we were drinking tequila that night. So this is bacon lardons I made earlier today. Okay, and so you're going to chop those up a little bit smaller yeah. too, right? Yeah. So it works out to about two full slices yeah. of bacon that have been cooked, as you can see, to be extremely crispy. You want to make that. sure that you've thoroughly rendered out the fat of the bacon so you don't introduce lots of unnecessary grease into what already is a recipe with two other meats that tend to be a little <laughs> on the greasy side. <laughs> Chef Anati says he loves that there's pepperoni going on here. We totally agree. We love pepperoni. We put it in all kinds of things. Quesadillas. It doesn't have to be just for pizza. Yeah. Okay, so you're crunching that up pretty darn good. And I'm sure everyone can hear That's good. how yeah. crunchy that bacon is. Yeah. Okay, that looks great. Okay, so. Okay, so then we're just going to add the bacon. Oops. I'm going to taste that. Okay. Mm, nice and crunchy and smoky. Uh, okay, so we've that, got pepperoni, yeah. bacon, onion, jalapeno. So now we need the cheese. Are you going to cut the cheese up? Because the cheese is a little stringy and you want to make, you want smaller pieces. And so. we're done with this for now. Yes. Do so you want me to put this up? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to put this back in the charcuterie drawer. The charcuterie drawer. drawer. Yes, we have drawers inside the refrigerator. Okay. Jeez. And they each have their own specific purpose. That's the only way we can possibly keep organized in this kitchen. Now you're going to take out or so. a quarter cup or so, but then you're going to chop these shreds up even smaller. It's pretty shredded already, but we'll just do it a little bit more. Okay. And do we want to keep this out in case you yes, need more? Yes, I'm going to use the, besides the cheese that goes in here, I like to top them off a little more cheese. Just to... Okay. So there's a quarter cup. Piece of cheese on top. In the actual filling, and then Philip's going to add a little bit more cheese to the top <laughs> once the filling is placed inside the salami cups themselves which are still cooling down in the baking pan, and we'll get those out in the not-too-distant future. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So, cheese goes in. I know, Susan is saying, Halloween season already. Okay, now I, I was it. thinking the same thing. And a hot minute after that, it's going to be Thanksgiving, and then it's going to be Christmas, Christmas, and then it's going to be New Year's. But the good news about time flying is that that means we're that much closer to moving to our new house, which we are very, very excited about. So. Okay. Now what well, happens next? We've got these filling ingredients going on here. Cool. I want to take these out. Okay. Sure for, oh, here. So. Ta -da! That's the result. Salami we got cup. a little cup of salami. And it's still loose. You can still pull it open and stuff. So it's not it's like. It's still, but it's, it's, so you want to handle these with care when you're yeah, taking them be, out of the baking pan. Be gentle. You heard it here. Okay, so we're just going to let those sit on the paper towel. For just a tiny bit. So it can just soak out a little bit of the extra grease that's come up from baking the salami. Those look really good. They're so cute. They are cute. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this. Oh, yeah, show that off. Greasy, greasy, greasy. So we're going to change this pan out with a clean one. I'll put this one in the sink and we'll clean it up later. And then we're going to start out with a clean pan to fill these 
once we're ready to go there. Now there's one more ingredient to add to your filling. Yep. Which is the pizza sauce. Yeah. I like them filling it first. Okay. So you're mixing up the produce, the bacon, the pepperoni, and the cheese. Just stir it all together to get it nicely incorporated. There's little stacks of pepperoni. Double ZZ Ranch is in the house. Hey, great to see you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. All the way from Oregon. We hope everything's going good on the ranch okay. up there. That's good. Okay, so. Philip has thoroughly stirred the ingredients together. And now the final ingredient for the filling is the pizza sauce. We're using a tomato-based pizza sauce from a jar. You can use marinara that you've made yourself, like we sometimes do, or any kind of red sauce that you like. Oh, this is I'm just gonna that. You're this, eyeballing. Yeah, it. but it's gonna be about a quarter of that. Okay. So Two big heaping tablespoons. Okay. So like you know, twice. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so we can always put in more yeah. if that's not quite. So you just want to use enough sauce to get everything to stick together. You don't really want it to be saucy. Too saucy anyway. We like a little bit of sauciness. Uh, there we go. Okay. And that's it. That's how easy putting together the filling was. Yeah. I think the hardest thing you did was like chop the jalapeno. Okay, so then this filling is ready to go. Ready to go. Okay. So, so we need to clean up a little bit around here. Now I need to turn the oven back on, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we're okay. going to turn the oven back on to 400, which shouldn't take too long to heat up. It's already over 300. So we've got the oven preheating again to 400 degrees. And you've just put aside a little bit of cheese that you're going to use to top just this off. a little bit for some topping. We'll yeah. show you what that's going to look okay, like. So now we just basically, what we do now is just take the little guys who've been sitting over here and put them back in their little slots. Okay, so we're just using a fresh muffin pan. If you don't have two of these mini muffin pans to do this, you can just wipe out the muffin pan you use to bake the salami by itself in and then return the salami cuts to that pan. That's how we actually did it over the weekend. We're doing this today because we happen to have two pans and it expedites this presentation so we don't have to spend time wiping out the other pan. Yeah, truthfully, if I was making these again, I'd use both pans because I want more than just 12. Yeah, we would want more than just 12. <laughs> so if you're going to make this recipe, I'd encourage you to double it, triple it, or even quadruple it because we gobbled down 12 of these in a hot minute. So I, I definitely think we're going to need seriously more than a dozen in the future. Oh yeah, here's how free the paper towel that's how much grease we soaked out. So that was worth doing. Okay. Yeah. Get a little scoop. Get a scoop's worth of stuff. Okay. And put it in the cup. All right. So you're just using a mini scoop. Yep. Just sort of to take a little, yeah. gather a little bit of the filling and plop it right in the salami cup. Ginger Snap Kitchen is in the house. Ooh, yeah. Hey, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Uh, Ginger Snap says, they could use a dozen of these. At least. I know. These are good. Okay, so what Philip is doing is just taking scoops of the filling mixture that he has just finished creating and putting one scoop in each of the salami cups so we can put these back in the oven to bake them up. Mmm. And I'm sipping our mocktail for today. This is called a Cinderella mocktail. This recipe comes from Natalie at the Mindful Mocktail channel here on YouTube. And we will tell you how to make this before this live show ends. Because I'm sipping mine awfully quickly, so I'm going to need another one. Mm -hmm. Very yummy. These are very yummy and very refreshing. Okay, so we're almost ready to pop these babies back in the oven. This is coming up almost back to 400. Now, as you can see, we're going to wind up with actually more filling than is required for just these 12. There's, this is making another That 12. could probably we'll make, make another yeah, 12. Yeah. So if we baked, you could probably make the filling the same way we did and then just bake up 24 cups and you'll have enough filling to fill all of them. 
There we go. And just in time, the oven is up to temperature. Mm -hmm. That's what that cute little noise indicates. Okay, now a little bit of cheese on top. Okay, so one final little element. Just because. Just to give us a little extra cheesy goodness, Philip is gonna just put on a little tiny bit more cheese on top of each one of the pizza cups. Those look good already. They look yummy right now and they're not baked yet. Well, I mean, everything's cooked. You could eat it like this. So you could actually eat it just like that. So you could um, make the cups and then like make some cream cheese mixture and put it in a piping bag and then pipe it into the cups and make it really pretty. Well, like we did a recipe a few weeks ago where there was a cream cheese mixture with other elements stirred in. Yeah. And that would work really well in this also. And then, of course... If you don't want to use a red sauce like we did, you could use a garlic pizza sauce. You could use an Alfredo sauce. Green chili sauce. Green Maybe. chili sauce would be, oh, you yeah. know, so you can Just take enough. this in any direction that you want. Uh -huh. And if you're like me and you like pineapple on pizza, you could definitely chop up some pineapple and add it to this recipe. And that would be yummy. Chorizo would be really good too. Oh, yes. Okay, so give us one last look really quick. So you, I want everyone to see that. Philip just piled a little bit of the grated cheese on top of each one of the pizza cups. And now they're going back into the oven at 400 degrees. And this takes between six and seven minutes. You want to bake these long enough that everything gets melty, but not so long that the salami starts to turn black because then you've gone a little bit too far. So Philip set the timer for six minutes. We'll see how it looks at six. When we did it over the weekend, about six, six and a half was the sweet spot for us in this particular oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've got to get a couple things out of the way, and shall we show how to make a drink? Go for it. Okay. Wait, I'm on. Here. I'll start making another mocktail while Philip finishes his first one. So let me get everything out of the refrigerator that we're going to need to make this happen. Okay, in this picture, I have orange juice. Here I have lemon juice. In this can, I have pineapple juice. And right here, I have grenadine. Now, grenadine is a bar syrup. It's a bright red color. It used to be made from pomegranate way back in the day, but now there is no pomegranate to be found in these ingredients. Some people think that grenadine is maraschino cherry juice from the cherry jar. I can assure you that's not the case. Maraschino cherry juice, while red, is a very, very liquidy substance, almost like water. Where it grenadine, tastes like cherry. Yeah, it does. And grenadine is just a sweetened bar syrup. It's kind of like caro corn syrup. It's uh, just got a lot of red food coloring in it. So what it does is it adds a little sweetness to the drink. And then, of course, the red can mix with other colors in the case of this and give us a really lovely blush sort of orange color for this particular drink. So let me give you the ratios for this. It's very, very easy. You need uh, two ounces. I'm using a two-ounce shot glass. So Two ounces of OJ, two ounces of lemon juice, two ounces of pineapple juice, and one teaspoon of grenadine. And then earlier, we topped this off with seltzer water from a can. That'll be our top off. You could also, if you want to add a little more of a oomph to the flavor profile. You could use ginger ale or ginger beer instead of the seltzer. And like I say, that will change this flavor profile significantly, but either one of these is delicious. So if you find that this needs a little more bump up, then you could definitely add some ginger ale or ginger beer to this. So let me show you how this is done. It's very, very easy. I have a cocktail shaker here and I'm using a cobbler style cocktail shaker that's three parts. There's the vessel, the strainer, and the lid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fill this cocktail shaker halfway full with ice cubes. So we're gonna go down here to the freezer and grab some ice cubes really quickly. And this is supremely, supremely easy to do. And now we're serving these, today we're serving these in tiki glasses just because we thought it was fun. You can serve these in a hurricane glass or a Collins glass, or even a tall tumbler glass, whatever works for you, or whatever you have in your cabinet. And Philip is filling the tiki glass all the way to the top with ice cubes. So what I'm gonna do is measure two ounces of OJ and pour that in our cocktail shaker. And then two ounces of lemon juice. 
Now, if you have the ability to access fresh squeezed lemon juice, that always tastes really good. But if all you have is what we have, which is pre-squeezed juice from the refrigerator, that'll work fine too. And then this is chilled pineapple juice. We're gonna also add two ounces of that. So that's our three juices. And then I'm gonna take the tablespoon, or excuse me, the teaspoon and measure out a teaspoon of the grenadine. This is gonna give us a little extra sweetness and create a really lovely color. Okay, so there we have it. Now the next thing I wanna do is make sure that I get the strainer on the cocktail shaker very securely because you do not want this coming apart while you're shaking it. And get the lid on, and then I'm gonna grab a hold of this with both hands and give this a very vigorous shake. And I always like to smile when I'm shaking mocktails because, you know, they're supposed to be fun. Okay, you know when you're done when, if you're using a metal cocktail shaker, the outside gets supremely cold and frosty, that means you're done shaking. Now, this mixture I'm showing you right now is actually enough to make two of these drinks. So I'm going to put half of this in the prepared glass that Philip already got ready for me. So we're going to just pour in about half of this mixture. And as you can see, it's this lovely orange color. Now, do you want seltzer topper? Or well, I'm gonna try this, the ginger. Okay, we tried seltzer earlier and it tastes really good. You really get the fruity flavors of the drink, especially the lemon. So this time we're gonna go for, we're using this ginger beer. This is non-alcoholic. You could use ginger ale if that's what you have available. And we're just gonna top this off with this ginger beer. This particular brand of ginger beer is Q, and this is very, very spicy. So then you're gonna to wanna to give that a gentle stir. Yeah. Philip has a straw, so he's just gonna give it a gentle stir. And the rest of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add the rest of this to the drink I've already got going. And I'm gonna to top mine off with some of this as well. Okay. Now for a taste. Okay, time for a taste. Ooh. How is it? That's really good. The ginger just adds a whole other dimension. You can even mm -hmm. smell it. I think that's the reason ginger ale and ginger beer. Ginger beer is just more gingery. It's way more ginger. So sweet. if you like ginger, you will love mm. ginger beer. It's very ginger okay. forward. Oh, appetizers are ready to come out of the oven, peeps. Are we there? Yeah. Okay, these babies are ready to come out. Are you going to put them over here on the rack? Yep. As you can see, we just, the cheese got a little melty, melty. Those look really, really good. Yeah. Oh, I may need a tool. Okay, I'm going to put these juices back in the fridge since we're done with our mocktails. These are super yummy. I definitely get the pineapple and the lemon. And then once we added the ginger beer instead of the seltzer, you get a nice ginger element going on here too. So it's very tasty, and I think this is very refreshing. This would be good on a really hot afternoon, that's for sure. Okay, cool let's bit. get this back in here, okay? Now, the, those are going to have to sit in the pan for a little while before you take them out. Otherwise, they're, they're just going to all kind yeah. of fall apart. Once they start to cool off just a little bit, then the structure of the salami cup stays intact much better. Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline is in the house. Hey, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. You're just in time because the triple meat pizza cups just came out of the oven. Mm. They look really good. And it smells really good in here. It smells like pizza. It smells like in pizza. Here. Yeah, it definitely smells like pizza in here. Okay, so we are sipping these. So how you like it with the ginger better or do you like it with the seltzer better? Well, it was different. The ginger just adds okay, the other dimension of flavor. Mm, it's really good. And also has a little more sweetness to it than the plain seltzer. I agree. It, it is a little sweeter yeah. with the ginger beer than it was with the seltzer. But I like it. Yeah, it's yummy. I see mm. Woodchuck is in the house. Hey, Woodchuck, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. Yes, Anadi, this is really refreshing. And you saw it's just, you know, really easy to find ingredients from the grocery store. You probably already have all the ingredients to make this in your refrigerator. And if you don't, you know, if you're not a fan of lemon, you can use lime instead of lemon juice. That also makes a really nice flavor profile. How are those babies doing? 
Let me, let me take my hand. Not quite ready to come out yet. You don't want to take them out too soon or the salami mm -hmm. cups will start to collapse. You want to let them cool down for a little while before you remove them from the pan so they stay intact. I'm going to issue the cheese. Well, the, the cheese topping can create an issue that makes it stick to the side of the pan. So as you can see, <laughs> Philip's got to use a tiny paring knife to get those away. Right. You could probably avoid that problem if you were just ever so slightly more careful to make sure none of the cheese touched the side. But sometimes when things melt, they go where they want to go. Those are looking awfully nice. So now Philip's removing these from the pan very carefully and then setting them on another set of paper towels. We're just going to soak out any excess grease from the bottom of these. So then they turn into finger food and won't get your fingers all greasy while you eat them. Well, they'll probably still get you greasy. But... Well, probably. But, you know, that's licking your fingers is okay as long as you're at home, right? Those are looking good. And it smells just like pizza in here. Hello. Mm. Okay. So this princess mocktail I mentioned to you earlier, this recipe came to us from the Mindful Mocktail channel. Here on YouTube and Natalie from the mindful mocktail also has a really cool Instagram account where she shows pictures of all kinds of different fun non-alcoholic drinks and I think she's a lot of fun to watch so Natalie if you're watching love your show love your mocktail recipes cheers to you and this people is the Cinderella mocktail I have no idea why it's called that so we'll have to ask Natalie when we go visit her channel and just so you know, there is a link to the Mindful Mocktail channel in the description right below where you're watching this video. So you can just head on over to her channel and check out what she's been up to. Okay. Mmm. This is so, so good. Okay, those popped out pretty nicely. So we're just going to let those sit on the paper towel just for a minute or two just to collect any excess grease that may be on the outside of the salami cup itself. Everything okay over there? Soaking the pan. Soaking the pan. Mm. Okay, so then is it going to be time to taste yet? Oh, yeah. I am ready. Now, these are super flavorful, all like they are, so you do not need any dip or any other accoutrements to add to these. These are yummy just as they are. And it's going to be taste testing time. Hello. How cool is that? That looks just like the thumbnail picture. There we go. There we have it. Low carb, triple meat, pizza cups. And I'm going to get a picture of this with my phone just so I can put it up on Instagram later so you can see the results up close and personal. Ooh, these look so good. Excellent. Let's hold that up close to the screen and make sure everyone can get a really good look at that. Yummy. That looks really, really yummy. Thank you. Woodchuck says looks gorgeous. I agree. These do look gorgeous. Now, I think I neglected to bring us pretty napkins today. So we'll just have to use the utilitarian napkins today. And are these cool enough to try? Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to give these a taste. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you for making these lovely hors d'oeuvres. Mmm. Mm. Oh my gosh, these are so good. Really yummy. Mmm. Mm. These will be addictive, so make sure you have plenty of salami around so you can make a lot more than just 12. Because once people taste these, they are going to need to have at least half a dozen of them. <laughs> so we're going to need to make a lot more than just 12 at a time when it's we have a party. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. So good. Mmm. The stomach oh gets gosh. a little crispy on the edges. I don't know, it's really good. You get the salami, pepperoni, the bacon, the cheese, onions, and peppers. And I get all heart. those flavors. The tomato sauce. Mm. Really, really supremely yummy. And as you saw, it's not hard to pull off. And we could bake a lot more than just 12 salami cups at a time. And then that, well, we could make, you know, a whole big, huge tray full of these babies. Because these are going to blow off the buffet table if you have a party. Mm -hmm. Anybody who likes pizza with meat 
is going to love these because it tastes like a meat pizza without the crust. It's really supremely good. Delish. Woodchuck says they'd come to a party if these were served. We would too. Yeah, we'd serve these. Those bacon fritters we made a couple of oh, weeks ago, so those were also low carb as well as these are. And those were supremely yummy. If you're a big fan of bacon like we are, <coughs> you'd really like those bacon fritter fritters. So if you missed our episode from two weeks ago, check out that on the replay where you can see how to put that together because it's really supremely easy. We use almond flour instead of wheat flour. So the carbs are also significantly reduced with that recipe. So if you're watching your carbs like we are to try to keep our weight down, this is a way to do that. <clears throat> okay. Woo. -hoo. Oh, there's one little lonely one over there. Oh, wow. Just eat it. Okay, here you go. Let me let me hold this up one more time. Let's see if we can get a good close up of this. The camera's mm -hmm. gonna want to refocus. There we go. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And these also, I can tell you, taste amazing. These are so delicious. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Low carb, naturally gluten-free, triple meat because mm -hmm. we used salami, pepperoni, and bacon. That's an amazing combination mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is so, so supremely good and so easy. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Ginger Snap Kitchen is reminding everyone to like this oh. video. If you've enjoyed the show today, if you want to give us a thumbs up, that would be lovely. And if you're not already subscribing, you might want to click that little red subscribe button right below where you're watching this live stream. And if you click the bell symbol as well, the YouTube system will send you a notification approximately a half hour before we have live streams. Now, you don't need to wait for that to happen because on Tuesdays, we do a live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And we've been on this same 3 p.m. schedule for almost an entire year. At the end of September, it will be a whole year of episodes every single Tuesday without hey. fail. So, you know, if you don't get a notification, you don't have to wait for it. Just come on over at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and we'll be hanging out here we'll in the be kitchen. Here making yumminess mm. these look so good can i have another one yes these are mm. so mm. yummy if you like pizza especially meat pizza you will love these appetizers yeah, you could do a lot of go a lot of ways i like a mm. Mm -hmm. enchilada sauce with pulled pork peter says salami and pepperoni are diet food sure jan <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. That is our friend. Yes, it's it sugar is. Sugar and carbohydrates that are bad for us. That's right. Even my, though I love them so much. My doctor did not tell me to stop eating meat. He told me to stop eating pasta, rice, potatoes, and bread. And I didn't want to listen, but I did. And that's when I lost 40 pounds. So that's all I did. I can eat stuff like this and not gain weight. But if this was on top of dough, kaboom. The weight comes right back. Before I met you, years ago, I weighed, I quit, I was used to smoke cigarettes a long time ago. And I quit smoking cigarettes and started eating chocolate to, you know, because of the cravings. And anyway, I gained a lot of weight. I was up to like over 240 pounds. And I went on the, I heard about the uh, Atkins diet, just giving up carbs. And so I stopped eating sugar and bread and I, I gave up everything. And for like, I don't know, a few months anyway. And I lost. All the way down to like 190, like almost 50 pounds. It was amazing. And I, but I couldn't maintain not eating all the things that I love. So I went back to eating, you know, some bread. I, I didn't, I used to have sugar or cereal for breakfast every morning with lots of sugar on it. And I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I give up some other things, but I still eat cookies and cake because I just can't stop. Well, I don't but eat no moderation. Carbs. Right. I don't eat zero carbs. Some people I know are very fanatical about avoiding every single carbohydrate that they can. Because, you know, you got to have a life. Uh, you know, once in a while, yes, I get the frozen French fries out of the freezer and put them all over a baking pan and bake them up really crispy and eat a whole entire bowl full of them and pig out. Because, you know, I, I like French fries. So I don't do it every day, just occasionally. Occasionally meaning what? Maybe once every two weeks? Yeah, about that. About that. Mm -hmm. eh, yeah, more or less. More or less, yeah. Okay, so, you know, but you do what you have to do. So I, I'm just, I don't want to be super fanatical about it to the point that my food plan makes me so unhappy that I just don't want to even get out of bed. You know, you've got to have something 
yummy. And these are yummy and they're easy. Oh my gosh, they are so easy. <laughs> Peter says, yes, everything in moderation as he sips the Manhattan. Ooh. You're only sipping the Manhattan, Peter? He's sipping it moderately, okay? <laughs> sipping moderately means gulping. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's why I like having a straw in my drink, because I can only get so much through the straw at a time. And Winchuck is uh, acknowledging that they're smoking a joint watching YouTube. All right. That sounds like a good way to spend your evening mm -hmm. to me. VO Gold Manhattan. VO Gold, Peter likes the good stuff. Sounds yummy, Peter. <laughs> Wish we were there. Mm. We could share our triple meat pizza cups with you. Oh my gosh. These are so good. These are so sweet. They're, they're not going to sit here on this plate very long once this show is over. We're going to pig out. Hey, Hobo Nickel Barbecue Testing Laboratory is in the house. Hey, Hobo. Great to see you. You're just in time to check out these apps. Let me hold these up closer to the camera so you can see them. These are the triple meat pizza cups that Philip made for us today. And as you can see, the dozen that we made are already halfway gone because mm. these are that delicious. Mm. Oh my gosh, these are so good. So for those of you who missed the earlier part of the episode, the ingredients to make this low carb, naturally gluten-free appetizer are in the description right below where you're watching this video. So you can copy and paste that ingredient list into your recipe book and give this recipe a try. And if you do, grab your phone like we did earlier and take a picture and put it on Instagram and tag us in your Instagram picture so we can take a look at how this recipe came out for you. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Peter is acknowledging that his husband is using the Peter Lee Let's Celebrate TV account. And Peter Lee is using his own personal account oh. that's just Peter Lee. So that's his husband, Philip. So hi, Philip. Great to see you. Thanks for Philip coming to hang out with us tonight. I know we got two handsome Phillips. I've never been anybody in Philip. So that is so cute. Okay, yeah. All right. So uh, well, it's great to have both of them here. They put on a really nice show. Peter just made. Crazy cake. Yeah. Did I mention that before? What's I, a, what about it? What, what, what is it? Well, it's actually a classic recipe, and he got his crazy cake recipe from Karen at In the Kitchen with Karen. Ah. And the original recipe, what it is, is there's no oil, no butter, and no dairy. That's crazy. Cray cray crazy. No wonder it's all crazy. Cake. But it looked so supremely good, and he cut it in half so we could see how moist it was, and mm -hmm. it looked really lovely. And the original crazy cake recipe, or wacky cake, as some people call it, is actually a chocolate cake. But Peter did it with warming spices. So it's more of an autumnal sort of flavor profile. And it yeah, looks yeah. supremely, supremely yummy, Peter. You did a beautiful job with that cake. It was like, oh, I just wanted to reach into the screen and get it. He cut it in these nice little squares. And I was like, I could just reach in there and grab one of those babies. It looked really delicious. So it's great to see you here this afternoon. Thank you, Peter and Philip, for joining us today. We certainly do appreciate it. So I need to have one more of these. How about you? So I just, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I want to have another one because I want to. I want to tell you every flavor I can taste in this. Mmm, mmm, these are so good. Mmm, yummy. I see Terry has entered the building. Hey, Terry, great to see you in the chat. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. Philip has just finished making these lovely triple meat pizza cups. They I were. Gone. I know. We've eaten seven out of the 12 we made. Well, next time I make them, I'm going to make more than 12. Mm -hmm. A lot more. Yeah. These are so yummy. I love how cooking the salami really intensifies the salami flavor. And then having a crispness on the salami is actually also really delicious. I love that part of it. I, I can definitely taste all the elements, the pepperoni, the bacon, the jalapeno. The jalapeno is actually not really hot. You can taste that there's jalapeno, but it's not overwhelming in the heat temperature department. It's that good flavor. That nice red pizza sauce that you used is also very, very, very yummy. But we could take this in a whole lot of different directions. We could use garlic sauce, like that garlic sauce you make. We sometimes mm -hmm. have pizza with garlic sauce. Do you think we could use bang bang sauce with this? Or is it too runny? Uh, 
well. Mm. Probably just need less of it than the red yeah. sauce to get it to coat everything. And a different, you know, different ingredient profile. Yeah, a different flavor profile that but would go better because Bang Bang sauce is very spicy. Use green onions and maybe some pork. Maybe was Bang Bang is actually was originally developed to complement Asian food, particularly chicken. So we could go in that kind of a direction. So what the point of all of this is is using the salami as the vessel for your appetizer you can fill it with just about anything yeah. you want we went in a pizza direction because we really like the taste of three meat pizza so that's why we wanted to do this but you can mix the ingredients up as far as the meats that you use you can use almost any kind of easily melted cheese that you like and if you're not a fan of jalapeno you can use like i said before you can use a bell pepper you can use a serrano you could just leave the pepper out if you're not a fan know. of it and then, of course, if you don't want to use mozzarella, you could use Colby, you could use Monterey Jack, you could use cheddar, you could use a blend of all of those. Parmesan. Parmesan would also be, if you like Parmesan, that would work really well in this recipe also. Terry says, they look yummy. They are, oh my gosh. And we're going to pig out on the rest of them in the not too distant future once we get to the end of this episode. The other thing we made today, let me run this by you one more time really quick. We made this lovely Cinderella mocktail. This has orange juice, lemon juice, pineapple juice, and a little bit of grenadine. And we mixed the first batch of these with just seltzer water. And then we made the second batch of these using ginger beer. Mm. And that little punch of amped ginger mm. really amped up the overall flavor profile. So since we tend to like intensely flavored things, I think I'd go with the ginger beer if I was making this again. But... Uh, in the recipe from Mindful Mocktail, Natalie used ginger ale, which is a lot mellower than ginger beer. Ginger beer tends to be much more intensely ginger flavored because it's produced a completely different way. But ginger ale would be good too. But ginger ale would also be really, really good. Or any soda you want. Really. Experiment. Woodchuck says parm crisp pizza bites. Ooh. We made... Uh, cheese crisps before but we did not use parmesan but we've seen parmesan crisps made before yeah you just put a pile of parmesan on put, parchment and then, yeah. and then bake it and then you put like a parmesan cookie you put anything you want on it. right well we've done that before with the cheese chips my mind is like explode. one of the things that i noticed when we did the cheese chips before we used cheddar cheese uh, they stay really crispy but when you put a topping on it that has any kind of a liquid in it they start to lose their you crispness really fast but it's okay yeah, they still taste good, but it's going to change the quality of the crispness in the cheese chip itself. But that doesn't mean don't do it, because when we've put toppings on cheese crisps, it tastes really, really good. Okay, so I want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us in the chat this afternoon and playing so nicely. We really appreciate that. And we had a live stream last Saturday night. Saturday night is something we've just done a couple of times lately. We happen to unbox some more, guess what, Fiesta yes, dishes. Hello. Like, we don't have enough dishes already. I think we could probably serve dinner to 100 people. We have so many plates. So if you missed our Saturday night episode, be sure and check that out on the replay if you can, because we unboxed 10 new pieces of Fiesta ware, and including these lovely plates that have this, what's called the Fall Fantasy Brights pattern on them. And it's several different shades of reds and orange and yellows and green that make this lovely leaf pattern around the outside. So be sure and check that out. Very autumnal. Very autumnal. We actually had them for the first time on the breakfast table yesterday morning. And they met with approval from everyone in our house. So that's always nice when everyone likes how the table is set. Okay. Uh Oh, Peter says, you say having dishes for 100 is like a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing. I do think there are other people that I know who might think it's a bad thing. But uh, actually, uh, the reason that I brought that up was the other day there was a thread in a Fiesta group that I belong to where people were talking about their collections. And someone said something negative about people bragging about how many dishes they have and that we were wasting money on frivolous purchases when there are children starving in China. And, and so I was kind of like, okay, well, right now we're not talking about starving children. We're talking about collecting dishes and the two things have nothing to do with each other. So I thought, you know, it's just one of those attempts from 
if you'll pardon me for speaking candidly, a drama queen to hijack an otherwise pleasant conversation. So all of us just decided to ignore that. I can see you've got that look on your face. This is my partner biting his tongue for what he thinks about things like that. Anyway, but yes, I agree with you, Peter. I do not think having dishes for 100 is a bad thing. And I fully expect that once we move to our new house, which is twice as big as the house we more have now. More storage means more things to fill it with. Yahoo! And also, because the house is so much larger, we will be able to do things like possibly accommodate a large number of people or even a small number of people for dinner, where it's our dining room that we have now. We've had six or eight. I think one time we had 10, but it was really cozy. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's okay if you don't mind cozy, but I would like to have less furniture in that up here too. Well, yeah, now we have more furniture in the same amount yeah. of space. So there's not as much room to move around as there once was. We're really looking forward to having larger rooms oh so we can God. spread out. And also our kitchen, our new kitchen is twice as big as this kitchen. And this kitchen is beautiful and has served us very well, but we're really looking forward to having more space, especially more cabinets. You've probably already heard us say, if you've been watching our show, we picked every option for additional cabinets that the developer was offering. Why wouldn't you? Right, I know. Why wouldn't you want all those cabinets? So anyway, we're very much looking forward to getting in our new house, and that will be happening probably right after the first of the year. And we'll be sure and tell you every detail. Right now, we're actually working on a video that is the framework of our house and that i'll tell you all about what the, that is in that video and it'll be coming up later this week so for today triple meat pizza cups mm. cinderella mocktails that what was on our menu these are so yummy so we hope you enjoyed watching us make this food as much as we enjoyed doing it for you and if you give this a try be sure and let us know we'd love to see a picture on your instagram account so tag us there if you post a picture of what you cook triple meat pizza cup these are a winner people Anyway, thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. We sure do appreciate having you here. And we'll see you again next Tuesday, same time, same place, same channel. Okay, everyone, enjoy your week. We'll be back again soon. Thanks again for being here with us. Bye. Woo! -hoo. Ciao, peeps. Okay, from San Francisco, I'm Mitch. I'm Bella. And we're out. See you soon. Bye.